emergency repair work. For driveways to dish clean to site prep, Science Excavating is here to assist. First pitch tonight set for 5 p.m. Science Excavating team is committed to doing the job right on schedule and within budget. Based in rural defiance, Science Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home business and industrial property. Science Excavating team offers many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, and land clearing and drainage work. Science Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Snora Rams Live summer sports season. For all your excavating needs, get a hold of Josh, 419-769-2290. And get a hold of Brad for your heavy haul trucking needs. Brad's 419-481-3738. Of course, you can visit both of them on Facebook or go to ScienceExcavating.com. Video coverage of today's game brought to you by Batten Stevens Body Shop in Jewel, Ohio. Visit Batten Stevens on Facebook or BattenStevens.com. These two teams already met during the regular season. Met for a doubleheader on Friday, June 6th. The point with two gems on the mound, they won both games. First game was 4-0, and the second game was a 1-0 win in eight innings. In the opener, Owen Espinosa threw a shutout, had seven Ks and allowed four hits. We'll have a chance to see Owen here in a little bit as he'll be starting for Napoleon. Trey Rubenstein pitched seven and two-thirds innings in game two. He had 11 strikeouts, and Trey allowed just two hits. In the spring game on April 22nd, that was a rainy Saturday. This is a rain out from Friday game. Saw the Wildcats come over to Groove Field and leave with an 8-6 win over the Tenor Rams. Rams come in at 9-8. Napoleon comes in at 17-1. Their lone loss was to Wasian by a score of 6-4. That was on June the 8th. Spring Rams were 19 and 7. They finished tied for second in the GMC. They lost to Ottawa Hills in the sectional finals by a score of 7 to 1. Ottawa Hills went on to be the state runner up in Division 3. Spring Wildcats went 10 and 15, and they had a tie. They were 2 and 12 in the NL, so a fast improved summer team. So the Wildcats have a lot to look forward to next spring. Superintendent at the point is Eric Belcher. High school principal is Ryan Wild. Athletic director Andy Ham does a fantastic job over there. Love when we come over there to visit. Nothing but the best from Andy Ham. Colors are red, a little sprinkle of red, navy blue and white. I'm bringing the throwback look back tonight with the jerseys that Napoleon will have on. Rams are coached by head coach Paul Farrell and assisted by Chris Wittick. Rams spring coach is, of course, BR coach Brett Renolette. Superintendent at Sonora is Nicole Wells. Principal Alex Nassiger. Athletic director is Jake Essex. Take over for the retired Coach Rudder. Coach Rudder's last work day, I think, was actually on June 30th. Wish the best for Coach Rudder. Say so he's not going to be a stranger. Still going to be seeing him a lot. So we hopefully we do. As always, Coach Rudder says hello to everybody out there watching and listening. Trainer is Emily Volmar. Rams colors are hunter green and white. And normally, Rams are Division Three. So wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching tonight, thanks for tuning in. Coming up live here from Sumter Field over here in Bryan, Ohio. Seats Snow Rams taking on the Napoleon Wildcats in Game 3 here in the Bryan Pool 2. District 1 Acme Tournament. Your studio tonight brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon that's located at 413 Hopkins Street in the Finch in-game scoreboard. Brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria and Striker in Ayersville pregame. Brought to you by Signs Excavating. Your video sponsor as always, Batten Stevens in Jewel, Ohio. Your stats brought to you by BSN Sports. Mr. Jim Gears, get a hold of Jimmy for all your sporting good needs. Post game, as abbreviated as it may be, this summer, Bidlack Insurance and Investments. During the summer league, everybody's just ready to go. They want to get out of here and go home, so we kind of get kicked out a little bit early. So we'll do our pregame in about 90 seconds. Player of the game and a Rams victory will be brought to you by Connie Higby at Higby Embroidery. Uniforms tonight, Rams in the forest green t-shirt slash jersey with the gray pants and the green cap. The point in the throwback, navy blues with the white numbers and red trim. The navy blue cap with the white N. 
on it. David Frog weather forecast, 82 degrees here, partly sunny, partly to mostly sunny. Looking at the lineups for the visiting Sonora Rams. Rams will be the visitors on the scoreboard again. Sonora missing a couple tonight. Normal players. Alex Holmeyer will lead off and be at shortstop. Emma Spicella will bat second, be at third base. B.J. Murlock will be on the mound and bat third. Grady Gusweiler batting fourth and in center field. Connor Wolfram batting fifth in right field, batting sixth. Riley Peters, Riley will be at first base. Cooper Farrell batting seventh and playing at second base. Trent DeLarber batting eighth and playing in left field. And your DH is Dom Mills. Dom will be hitting for the Rams catcher, Parker Hancock. Further to point, Wildcats leading off in center field, Trey Rubenstein. Batting second in left field is Devin Dietrich. Batting third behind the plate, Luke Hardy. Clean out spot for the Wildcats is Lucas Gerken. He will be DHing for second baseman Ben Leachty. Batting fifth is Parker Woods. Parker will be at third base. Jacob Shadle hitting sixth will be at first base for the Wildcats. Batting seventh is Kel Bickle. Bickle will be at shortstop for Napoleon. Batting eighth is Owen Espinosa. Espinosa on the mound. <laughs> Fantastic summer. Followed up his spring season that was pretty darn good as well. And batting ninth in right field is Zach Ellers. As he said on the mound, Owen Espinosa. Record of 4-0 this summer. 30 innings pitched. Appeared in six games, 47 strikeouts. ERA is .93, and he's walked just nine. So coming up, going to have playing of our national anthem. And we'll take a brief break, and we'll be right back with the playing of our national anthem. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Okie Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy an ice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Oklahoma a Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. I'll go back to Sumter Field. The Poya wins will head to Defiance on Saturday to take on the Bulldogs for a right to go to the Acme State, which actually is held at Defiance. So I'm actually sure Defiance can play in the tournament that they're hosting, but we'll find out. Coming up, playing of our national anthem.
playing of the national anthem over here at beautiful Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. If you've never been over here, I suggest you make the trip at least once. My favorite spot to come of all the venues that we visit by far and away. Just a beautiful facility over here at Bryan Sumter Field. 320 down the lines, 350 in the alleys, 370 to straightaway center field. Wind blowing in ever so slightly from center field, about five miles an hour. Flag actually is barely moving. Defensively for Napoleon, Owen Espinoza will be on the mound. Luke Hardy behind the plate. Jacob Shadel at first. Ben Leasty will be at second. Kel Bickle will be at short for the Wildcats. At third base, hot corner is going to be manned by Parker Woods. Wildcat outfield, Devin Dietrich will be in left. Trey Rubenstein in center. And Zach Ellers will be in right for Napoleon. Set on the mound, Owen Espinoza. Espinoza, spectacular summer, 4-0. 30 innings pitch, six games, 47 strikeouts for Espinosa in those 30 innings pitch. ERA of .93 for Owen. He's walked just nine in 30 innings pitch and actually did face the Rams earlier this season in that doubleheader that the teams had back on June the 6th. Rams did not score a run in the doubleheader. They lost the first game 4-0 and then lost a heartbreaker in the second game. That was an eight-inning game that Napoleon squeezed out a run in the top of the eighth and won by a score of 1-0. So in a total of 14 innings, Rams have yet to score on the Napoleon Wildcats, at least in summer ball in the spring. That game was a Saturday rainy afternoon game on Saturday. The Friday night game was rained out at Napoleon. They moved it to Sonora. But Sonora has the turf, although Napoleon has a beautiful complex as well, where Espinosa shut down the Rams, I said, in the summer game. Leading off for the Rams will be Alex Holmeyer. Holmeyer, Spicella, and Morlock, the first three to face Espinosa. Righty winds it up. Fires to the plate. First pitch is a strike. Five o'clock on the nose. First pitch, game time temperature, 81 degrees over here at Sumter Field and Bryan. 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed by Holmeyer. Holmeyer on base four times last night. Maybe. Four out of his five plate appearances, Alex was on base. Bats from the right side, 0-2 pitch from Espinosa. Bit outside, one ball and two strikes. Espinosa's 1-2. Just a bit outside, two balls and two strikes. 81 on the speed gun here at Bryan. Nice feature they have. Paid a lot of attention to it yesterday as well. 2-2 Two -two pitch from Espinoza. Homeyer down swinging. First out recorded be a strikeout by Owen Espinoza. It's going to bring up Adam Spicella. Spicella will be at third base for Coach Farrell. Coaching at first base. Coach Wittick coaching at third for the Rams. Espino winds it up, first pitch, swung on, hit right field. Coming on as Ellers has to play it on the hop. Opposite field single by Adam Spicella. Come bring up B.J. Morlock. Morlock will be on the mound for the Rams when they hit the field in the bottom part of the inning. In the Defiance bracket, Defiance is 2-0, and oh. Archibald 1-1, one and one. Wasion 1-1, one and, one. and Paulding is 0-2. So the winner from this bracket will head to Defiance on Sunday and take on the Bulldogs. Throw over, back safely with the head first dive is Spicella. Quite adventurous yesterday over there at first base. Adam nearly picked off about four or five times. Strike call. First pitch to B.J. Morlock. Spicella at first, one out just underway over here at Sumter Field in the Acme Tournament. Pool B over here in District 1. Swung on and missed. Morlock just a little bit late. Throw down to first base by Cello back with the head first dive. Connor Morlock has no balls and two strikes. Napoleon 17 and 1. Rams 9 and 8. 
this summer. So a number of the regular Rams not here on this Friday night. Throw over to first base. Another head first dive by Spicella. Mason McQuillan not here. Along with Caden Radzik playing with the River Bandits. Pitch to Morlock is outside. One ball and two strikes to BJ. BJ will be settled. Be on the mound for the Rams when they take the field in the bottom half. Spicella takes off. Morlock hits it. That's a second baseman. Bobbles it, recovers, throws over, not in time. Morlock on it first on the air by the second baseman. I think Spicella. Running in front of the second baseman, Ben Leachty, kind of distracted Leachty. One hop right in his bread basket. He bobbled it once, twice, and three times. It hit the infield dirt here, but not before. Morlock legged out a. Well, let's say a single, but it's an error. Error on the second baseman. Spicella's at second. Morlock's at first. Go bring up the number four hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Yeah, that's Gusweiler, fantastic that's play again out there in center field yesterday, all the, although the field umpire said it was not a catch. Asked Grady before the game, he says, heck yeah, I caught it. 1-0 pitch to Gusweiler, swung on, lined into the Rams' dugout on the first base side. Count evens, a ball, a strike, one out. No score, Rams have runners at first and second. Ball off the hole there. With Delta dropping out, kind of threw a little monkey wrench in the chain over here. Rams were supposed to play Delta on Wednesday. That was a forfeit by Delta. Last night here, Rams heartbreaking loss to Brian. Pitch to Gus Weiler, gets away from Hardy. Runners move up to second and third. Down to third goes Spicella. To second goes Morlock. Almost looked like a pass ball. Corners! Corners! More than a wild pitch. Oh. So Gus Weilers has runners, two runners in scoring position with one out. Espinoza's 2 1 pitch to Grady. Espinoza. Steps off the mound. He's halfway through his follow through. Gus Weiler asks for time. It was granted by the umpire. Hey, young grass! Third baseman Parker Woods and it's a cut of the grass. So is first baseman Jacob Shadle. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes to Gus Weiler. Come on. Hey there. Come on. Espinosa, long look in. Gets the sign from Hardy. One shake off. Now he's ready. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Gus Weiler. Change up, hit right back to the middle. Into center field for a base hit. Scoring is Spicello. Morlock had to hold up to make sure the ball went through. So Gus Weiler with an RBI single puts the Rams on top by a score of one to nothing. We said BJ had to hold up to make sure the ball was going to get through. So BJ is on it third. Gus Weiler is on it first and as always, Grady's a threat to steal over there at first base. Going to bring up Connor Wolfram. Connor, tough luck loss on the mound last night here for the Rams. When Lucardi asks for time, steps out, flashes signals to the infield on the, what's going to happen when Grady takes off for second on this pitch. Espinosa from the set position. It was over. Back standing is Grady Gusweiler. Oh, it's the middle. Good Come on, kid. Get out. Get out. Outfield straight away for Wolfram. Comes the pitch. Grady, nice jump. Stopped about a quarter of the way down. Put on the brakes. Came back to first base. Pitch with a strike to Connor Wolfram. Oh, one pitch from Espinosa to Connor Wolfram. There goes Grady. Swung on a miss. Throw goes through. Gus Weiler did not slide in the throat out at second base. Good job. So Grady's caught stealing for the second out. Two. Grady, for whatever reason, didn't slide in the second. Huge out there. Didn't see what the pitch was to Connor. 
It's a strike, so no 0 2 pitch coming from Espinosa to Wolfram. Connor swings and misses for strike three. And just like that, the Rams rally is over. Promising rally. Took a bit of a hit there in the last 90 seconds, but the Rams do score one run. They do so on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. Half an inning of play over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Tenora won, and Napoleon coming to back. We'll be back right after this on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Back to the action. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postima Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Back here, Rams with a one nothing lead. Definitely had a chance to grab more. Just unfortunate set of uh, circumstances there prevented that. On the mound for the Rams is the soon-to-be senior, B.J. Morlock. Senior righty, take the ball for Coach Farrell and the Rams. Behind the plate, Parker Hancock. First base, Riley Peters. Second base, Cooper Farrell. Shortstop tonight, Alex Homeyer. Adam Spicello at third, Rams outfield. Trenton DeLarber is in left. Grady Gusweiler in center. And Connor Wolfram is in right. For the Wildcats, leading off in center field, Trey Rubenstein batting second. Devin Dietrich. Dietrich is in left field. Luke Hardy batting third. Hardy behind the plate. DH in the cleanup spot is Lucas Kirkin. Batting fifth, Parker Woods. Woods is at third base. Spending six, Jacob Shadle. Shadle's at first base. Seventh is Cal Bickle. Bickle is at short. On the mound and hitting eighth is Owen Espinoza. And batting ninth is Zach Ellers. Rams with a run on two hits in the first inning. Ten runners at first and third and one out. And with a, a flash, that ended quickly. Let's go three. Three. Here we go, babe. Let's go, Ruben. Trey going to read off, read off, lead off. Trey, 447 this summer has 14 runs batted in. Let's go, three. Okay. Orlock winds up first pitch. Low ball one. I don't know if you guys can hear the announcer in the background, but top of yesterday's, you have, definitely have a radio voice. Like old school 70s radio voice. Swung on high fly ball to left field, close to the line, or they're putting it away. For the Rams is Trenton DeLarber. Rubenstein sent a rocket in the air. DeLarber camped over it over by the left field line and put it away for out number one. Devin Dietrich steps in. Dietrich, 333 this summer, has six runs batted in for the 17 1 Wildcats. First pitch by BJ, just misses, one ball. Josh got his tent popped up down there again. Josh, Josh and the family just outside the Rams dugout in the Ohio State tent. Pitch by Morlock to Dietrich, just misses, two balls and no strikes. Base is empty, one out here, bottom of the first inning. Rams on top, one nothing. Third meeting this summer between these two teams. It's the first run the Rams have scored in the two of now three meetings. That pitch is low and outside. Three balls and no strikes to Devin Dietrich. Luke Hardy awaits on deck for Napoleon. I like the Napoleon bringing back the red in the uniforms the last couple of years. It's all basketball had the throwback as well. Pitch is low and outside. Ball four. Down to first base goes Devin Dietrich with a one-out walk. Luke Hardy batting third behind the plate. Hardy, 348 with eight runs batted in this summer. I see it, Dave. 
Here we go. Are you going to bat from the right side? Haven't seen it yet. Oh, Luke. Have you seen it yet? I have to turn down my crowd mic to pull in a little bit. <laughs> Definitely into the game. That pitch is a ball one, which is great to hear. Warlock comes set. 1 0 pitch coming to Hardy. There goes the runner. Hancock throw down to second base. Throws in time, but just ahead of the, of the slide is Dietrich with a stolen base. Nice throw down there by Parker Hancock. Parker Hancock will really good on that. So Wildcats with the runner in scoring position at second base as the dust flies. Now clears down the left field line. Pitch coming to Hardy by Morlock. Strike called. Two balls and a strike to Luke Hardy. Thanks for joining us here on Sonora Rams Live. Keith Brown solo for the last time this year, probably. 2-1 pitch coming to Hardy. Morlock comes to the plate. Strike two called. Hardy steps out, didn't think so. Looked to be a little bit low and outside. Two balls and two strikes. Scoreboard says three and one. Maybe I wrote down the wrong. Maybe I missed a strike. That is, I did have it right. Scoreboard had it wrong. So that is a full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Runner a second. Dietrich leads away. Morlock comes set. Payoff pitch coming to Luke Hardy. Low ball four. Back to back walks. Ball gets away from Hancock. Going down to third is Dietrich on the wild pitch. So Dietrich's at third with one out. Hardy goes down the first on the walk. Or is that first and third for Napoleon with one out? It's going to bring up cleanup hitter Lucas Gherkin. Gherkin just 133 this season. He's DHing for second baseman Ben Leachty. Morlock's pitch squares around the bunt. Bunts a foul. A safety squeeze by the Wildcats. Bottom on the first, one nothing Rams. Napoleon threatening to tie the Earth Runners at the corners with just one out. Morlock on the mound for the Rams comes set. Looks at the runner at first. Now glances at the runner at third. 0-1 pitch coming to Gherkin. Squares around the bunt again. Bunts through it. Throw down to first base. Way off. Pierce snags it. Hey, hey. Back. Back. You're good. Throw it up. So Gherkin down on the count. No balls and two strikes. Gherkin wearing number 16 on his Napoleon throwback uniform. Almost like a mid-80s Cleveland Indians looking jersey. Like a Julio Franco and Joe Carter. 0-2 pitch coming. Swung on, fouled back. I say the last time you'll be hearing myself solo. Unless the Rams somehow move on to defiance to play for right for state birth. That will be on Sunday. Think kind of a miracle for that to happen. But it is a possibility. 0-2 pitch just a bit outside. One ball and two strikes to the number four hitter, Lucas Kirkin. Parker Woods on deck. Morlocks 1-2 to Gherkin. High fly ball to the second base side. Come in and making the running catch is Cooper Farrell. Not sure if there's miscommunication there. Peters didn't call for it. Morlock couldn't get there, so Farrell come running in and made almost a sliding diving catch from deep second base. So that's out number two. That's a huge out there. For Morlocks, don't forget number five hitter Parker Woods. Woods 316 this summer with eight runs batted in. Woods at third base for the Cats.
Hawaiian runners at first and third. Orlock comes set. Comes the pitch. Spins him out of the way. Two balls and a start and no strikes to Parker Woods. Jacob Shadle on deck for Napoleon. Comes the pitch. Swung on and missed. Woods swinging for the fences there. Two balls and a strike. Two outs. Bottom of the first inning. Tenor up one nothing. Woods trying to hit it in that 350 gap. 350 in left center and right field here at Sumter Field. Here comes the pitch. Misses. Nice stop by Parker Hancock. Saved a run. Three balls and a strike to Parker Woods. Three one pitch coming to Parker Woods. Morlock steps off. Runners retreat back to first and third base. Nice crowd over here. This Friday night. Three one pitch coming. Low ball four. That's going to load him up. Third walk this inning for Morlock. Number six hitter Jacob Shadle is going to step in, step in with the bases loaded. 429 for Shadle this summer. He has 10 runs batted in. Morlock comes set. There's the pitch. Driven deep in the gap. That's going to score three. One hops the wall. Gus Weiler runs over to get it. Here comes Dietrich. Here comes Hardy. Here comes Woods. In with a triple is Jacob Shadle. Shadle drilled it in the left center gap. One hop the wall. Dietrich had no trouble scoring. Hardy had to hustle all the way around from first or for second. And Parker Woods had to hustle all the way around from first. So three RBIs for Jacob Shadle puts the Cats up 3 nothing or 3-1, I should say, 3-1. Here in the bottom of the first, coming up Kel Bickle. Bickle, the number seven hitter, swings at the first pitch. Ground ball, shortstop side, throw to first base by Holmeyer is in time. Nice play by Alex Holmeyer to retire Kel Bickle. In the inning for the Wildcats, they get three runs, and they do so with just one hit, three walks. Detriment to the Rams. No Ram errors and one left on. We're through one inning, inning ugh, tongue tied over here. We are through one inning of play over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio in the Acme District 1 B Pool Tournament with Napoleon 3 and Sonora 1 on your Drop Zone Pizza Rea scoreboard. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back here at Sumter Field, 3-1 Wildcats as Rams will send six, seven, and eight Peters, Farrell, and Larber against the one Espinosa. So if you or any of your family members are looking for a job, you stop and visit the Mech Lobby, 21 Seneca Street. You can go online, mechcareers.com. Check out the job openings there. I know shipping department is in bad need of employees. I'm tired of working 60 hours a week. So if anybody can count to 10 and put parts in a box and tape it up and slap a label on there, make sure you visit the Mech website and fill out an application today. Nice work atmosphere, nice and quiet, clean. Not really warm at all. So tell your friends. Fill out an application for Mac today. You say, I want to work in shipping. Please. Peter steps in. Soon to be senior anchoring down first base here tonight. 
Espinoza winds it up. First pitch to Pierce. Strike called. Rams got one in the first, had a chance to grab more. Unfortunately, did not capitalize on that opportunity. And the Wildcats did. Pitch to Peters outside. Count evens a ball and a strike. 3-1 to Poyan. Top of inning number two. Yep. Pitch to Peters is a strike on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes to Riley Peters. Owen Espinosa pitches from the first side of the pitching rubber, winds up, fires, Peters laces it foul outside of Rams coach Paul Farrell down there. Assistant coach Chris Wittick down here at third. Yeah. Swung on and miss. Strike three. Down goes Peters for the first out here. Second strikeout, third strikeout by Espinosa. Coming up, number seven hitter, Cooper Farrell. Cooper at second base. Nice play on that infield pop up there that nobody seemed to want to grab. Farrell bats from the right side. Pitch to Cooper. Strike cold. Coach Renolette in the Rams dugout over there taking in the contest here on this Friday night. Oh, one pitch is fall back. Espinosa quickly ahead of Cooper Farrell. No balls and two strikes. Espinosa winds, fires, swung on and missed. Balls in the dirt. Hardy digs it out. Fires down to first base to get Farrell back-to-back -back strikeouts for Espinosa. That's four so far. Bright future for the Rams, as we said. The Rams... Won the Junior Acme State Championship a week ago today. That was down in Salina. They won that game uh, 15 to 4, I believe. Parker Hancock was the MVP. Larber steps in, swings at the first pitch, and hits it over our head. Trenton down, no balls, and a strike. Towards left center. Hi, boy. Ran from 19. This pitch lined the shortstop on one hop. Off the balance throw in time by Cal Bickle. What a heck of a play by Bickle. 6 3 on the put out. In the inning, Rams go quickly. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We couldn't say last night. Rams stranded 12. After an inning and a half over here at Sumter Field. Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows the point three and Sonora one. We'll be back right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. And thanks to Connie for being a longtime sponsor here at Tenora Rams Live. She sponsors the Player of the Game Award in a Rams win. Anybody that's been a fan of the Snow Rams in the last 25, 30 years, or going to Tenora, have grandkids that played for Tenora, or kids themselves, probably have about 27 Higby Embroidery t-shirts somewhere in your possession, rather be in your attic, or in your closet, or in your dresser. <laughs> and one of those, I probably have 57 of the Higby Embroidery, numerous baseball, basketball, football t-shirts floating around. A lot of energy here. A lot of energy here. 
For Napoleon, 8, 9, and 1 to face B.J. Morlock. First pitch to Owen Espinoza is fouled off over the Rams' dugout. Strike one. Espinoza, 325 this summer, has eight runs batted in. Espinoza, Ellers, and then the top, Trey Rubenstein to face B.J. Morlock. I turned down my crowd mic again. Napoleon's pounding the bat against the dugout. 0-2 pitch coming. To the backstop, that one goes. One ball and two strikes to Owen Espinoza. Zach Ellers awaits on deck. Pitch coming to Espinoza. Fouled off first base side, stays alive. One ball and two strikes to Owen. Morlock gets the sign, winds it up. One, two pitch, swung on. Fouled first base side, close to the Rams dugout. One ball and two strikes. Sean Thompson, the head coach for Acme, Helen Bosselman, Jr. Acme. One, two, pitch by BJ, swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Espinoza, the first out here in the second inning. 3 1. Cats on top. First strikeout for Morlock. Bring up the number nine hitter, Zach Ellers. Ellers, 182 this summer. Two runs batted in. The point is a team coming with the 272 average. Napoleon, one of the teams that uses Game Changer. Nice little handy app. You're looking for stats and whatnot real quick. 0-1 pitch coming. Outside, count evens the ball. A strike one out here in the bottom of the second inning. 3-1 Napoleon. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Beautiful day over here at Sumter Field. Pitch coming. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Little to no wind over here. Morlock 74 on the speed gun. Morlock winds it up. Pitch from BJ to Ellers. Oh, bouncer third base side. Fired over by Spicella is in time. Nice play by Adam to get Ellers out. 5-3 on the put out for out number two. Fielder, Top of the lineup, Trey Rubenstein got a high fly ball to left field. His first plate appearance caught out there by Trenton DeLarber. Like a major league pop-up. Warlock winds up, fires, pitch lined into left field for a base hit. Rams third baseman Kevin Spicella was in as a cut of the grass. Had he been back in his normal position, may have had a chance on that, but Rubenstein smashed it right by him with him playing in so close. Number two hitter, Devin Dietrich, steps in. Dietrich, one of the three walks in the first inning off the arm of Morlock, scored on the basis clearing triple by Jacob Shadle. There goes the runner, throw down by Hancock. A little bit high in by a whisker on the stolen base is Trey Rubenstein. So Napoleon has a runner in scoring position with two outs, one ball, and no strikes to Dietrich. Morlock comes set, looks back at Rubenstein. Pitch, strike, call on the outside corner. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Morlock's 1-1 coming to Dietrich. Change up inside. Two balls and a strike. 64 on the Morlock changeup. Long walk in by BJ gets a sign from Parker Hancock. 2-1 pitch coming to Dietrich. 
Just misses outside. Count goes to three balls and a strike. Reset the Rams defense while we get a chance for the next opportunity. Those just popping in and out. May have missed that. Warlock comes set, looks back at second. Rubenstein leads away. 3-1 pitch. That's low and outside. Ball four. Another walk for Napoy and Dietrich. Heads down to first base. Fourth walk for the Cats. Luke Hardy steps in. Hardy drew one of the walks. That was in the first inning. Came around and scored on that bases, bases clearing triple by Shadel. Hardy 348 this summer. Runners at first and second for Napoleon. They have two outs. Morlock comes set. Pitch. Shot foul just outside the bag at third. Down the left field line. Warlock's 0-1 pitch coming. Here it comes. Just inside, ball and a strike to the number three hitter, Luke Hardy. Rams kind of fell asleep there. Rubenstein took advantage and jetted to third base. Throw back to Morlock. Rubenstein had it timed perfectly and he took off. So now runners at first and third. Hardy has a one ball, one strike count, two outs here in the bottom of the second. 3-1 Wildcats. If they win, they will play Defiance at Defiance on Sunday for a right to go to the Acme State Tournament, which is at Defiance. 1-1. Throw down. Cut off by Cooper Farrell. So a stolen base by Dietrich. Rubenstein holds that third. Second stolen base this inning. Actually, third. Rubenstein, two steals this inning. So Cats have runners at second and third now with two outs. 1-1 one, one count to Hardy. It's going to steal home. Comes a throw. Rubenstein with a straight steal of home. Rams falling asleep at the wheel here this inning. Rubenstein was 90% of the way to the plate before... The Rams even know what happened, so Rubenstein steals home. Third steal in the inning for Trey. <laughs> Which is almost unheard of. Well, it's almost impossible, literally. Double steal, Dietrich went down to third. So five steals this inning. Morlock comes set, pitch to Hardy's low, nice stop by Hancock. Two balls and a strike. To Luke Hardy. Wow. So Jose Ramirez do that for Cleveland this week. 2-1 pitch coming to Hardy. Long look in by Morlock. Looks at the runner. Still looking in. Hardy should have asked for time, and he does. Morlock does not step off. Still on the mound. Hardy asked for time. Digs back in. BJ's 2-1 pitch to Luke Hardy. This must have been 3-1. So Hardy draws his second walk. Cats have runners again at first and third with two outs. We're going to have the cleanup here. Lucas Gherkin. Gherkin flew out to, I guess popped out to second baseman his first plate appearance. Nice play by Cooper Farrell on the play. Came racing in to scoop it off the turf, actually. Those communications by the Rams infield. Kind of one of those, you got it, I got it, you got it, nobody's got it, so I'll just grab it. Warlock's pitch. Swung on! Drilled to center field. That's going to score one. Gus Weiler comes in, fires it back in. RBI single by Lucas Gherkin. Scores Devin Dietrich from third to put in the point up by a score of 5-1. to one. Parker Woods is going to step in. Woods batting fifth and playing at third. Scored in the first. Drew a walk then scored, I should say. 
Hardy at second for Napoleon. Gherkin at first. Still two outs. Morlock pitches. This one's drilled in the center field for a base hit. Gusweiler comes up. Throw to the plate by Grady. Comes to throw. The play at the plate. Not in time. Throws just a bit off. Scoring Luke Hardy from second base. Another RBI single by the Cats. This one from Parker Woods. Puts the point up 6-1. Gherkin's at second. Woods is at first. Number six hitter Jacob Shadle. All this with two outs. The first two batters are retired. Espinosa struck out. Ellers grounded to third base. Then Rubenstein singled. Stole three bases. Dietrich Walk stole two bases. And it's been downhill ever since for Tenora. Jacob Shadle. Bases clearing triple last plate appearance, which was last inning. Three in the first, three in the second for Napoleon. They lead six to one. Six runs, four hits, one error for Napoleon. One run, two hits. Errorless ball is far for the Rams. Morlock to the plate. Misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Rams tough luck loss last night here to Brian. 7-6. Or eight, or I'm sorry, 8-7 was the final. Crown ball, second base side. Farrell has a ball go through the wickets. It's going to score one. Rams throwing the ball all over the place. Now here comes the runner home. Not in time. Two runs score on that. Gherkin scores. Parker Wood scores. Shadle reaches on the air. He goes down to second base. 8-1, Wildcats. Ground ball took a bad hop on the Rams second baseman. Cooper Farrell went in the right field. And after that, the Rams were kind of throwing the ball around a bit. So it's 8-1, five runs, all with two outs. Pickle will be the ninth man to bat this inning. 0 for 1, grounded to short his first plate appearance, 256 this summer. Orlock's pitch swung on and missed, strike one. Orlock comes set, looks at the runner a second. Jacob Shadle, pitch to the plate to Bickle. Bickle fouls it off. No balls and two strikes. All this with two outs. Seven consecutive batters have come to the plate. Five of those have scored. Pitch, low and away. The runner heads for third. Throw in time. No, say he misses the tag. Another stolen base for Napoleon. This time it's Shadle. Throws in time. Spicella. Down there at third, tried to put the tag on the sliding shadle, and the field umpire said he missed the tag. So runner at third now. One ball, two strikes, the count to Kel Bickle. Warlock comes set. One, two, pitch to Bickle. Ground ball in the left field for a base hit. Another RBI for the Wildcats. That scores shadle. RBI for Bickle. Point is batted around here in the second and now lead nine to one. Six runs, all with two outs. Oh, and Espinosa going to step to the plate for the second time this inning. First time he struck out. Morlock's pitch, strike on the outside corner to Owen Espinosa. Rams definitely have an uphill climb, trailing 9-1. to one. Napoleon coming in with just one loss this summer. They are 17-1. and one. Out of the favorites to head to state. There goes the runner. Throw down by Hancock in time. Ball off the glove of shortstop Alex Homeyer. So another stolen base. Let's go, baby. This one by Kel Bickle. So Bickle went second on the stolen base. 
Seven steals a sitting for Napoleon, unofficially. Morlocks 1-1 pitch coming to Espinoza. Inside, just misses. Two balls and a strike. First base coach over there for Napoleon literally can't handle any more gear. Yes. He needs like a, a grocery sack to handle all the gear that he's holding over there. Two balls and a strike to pitch. That's low and outside ball three. Back in my day, when we played, it sounded like shouting at the clouds guy. The amount of gear on our team was about three people. <laughs> had batting gloves, maybe. That was one batting glove because they had blisters. 3-1 pitch coming to Espinoza from Morlock. That's low ball for another walk. So Espinoza, 10th man to come to the plate this inning. Heads down to first base on a walk. Coach Farrell asks for time. He's going to head to the mound. Long. We're going <laughs> to... That's what somebody said. It looks like a sporting goods store down there. <laughs> Which he did. Coach at first base for Napoleon makes a trip into the dugout just to get rid of all the equipment that he accumulated this inning. Six runs for Napoleon this inning, all with two outs. The first two batters were retired. Espinoza and Ellers. And after that, it's been a house of fire for the Rams. Point leads 9-1. to one. They still have two runners on. Pickles at second. Espinosa's at first. Zach Ellers, his second at bat this inning, and he was a second out earlier with nobody on. 182 for Ellers this summer. Pickle at second. Espinosa at first. They lead away. Morlock comes set. First pitch coming to Ellers. He lines it in to left field for a base hit. Comes another run. RBI single by Ellers. Good, Rams again. Throw the ball away. Allowing Espinoza to go down to third. So Espinoza winds up at third. Ellers is at first. Now 10 to 1, Napoleon on top, and that's going to be it for BJ Morlock. Morlock, not to sound like a broken record to keep spinning around and around and around, but BJ retired the first two batters this inning. So Napoleon had two outs with nobody on, and they were leading 3 to 1. It's now 10 to 1. Morlock will be replaced. And Napoleon still has runners at the corners with those same two outs 45 minutes later. So we'll be back with the pitching change, and we will do it right after this. Grab his own pizzeria scoreboard shows Napoleon 10, Sonora 1. We'll be right back. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Back at Sumter Field, the wheels have fallen off for the Rams and the engine has fallen out as well. 10 to 1. Wildcats on top, still batting in the second inning. Pitching change, Adam Spicella comes on from third base and will head to the mound. And Morlock heads from the mound and will go to third base. So incoming junior, Adam Spicella will hurl some pitches here against the red hot Napoleon Wildcat bats. Cats, a 10 to one lead, seven runs here in the second. For Napoleon, and they are still batting. Scorecard's going to be a mess the rest of the way. Top of the lineup again, Trey Rubenstein. Rubenstein singled and stole three bases last inning and scored. Straight steal at home by Rubenstein was a thing to see, actually. We'll upload the video 
more clear version of it later tonight and be like 1080 high def. First pitch is a ball thrown over by Spichala. The first base back safely with the head first slide is Ellers. On deck is Devin Dietrich. Spicella comes set, works out of the set position with the bases loaded. Or I guess no, bases were not loaded, first and second. First and third. High pop up to second base, Cooper Farrell. Farrell puts it away to end the misery for the Rams this inning. Napoleon sends 11 to the plate and they score 10 runs. And we'll add up all the damage in between innings. Heading to the top of the third here at Sumter Field in Bryan. Wildcats 10 and the Tenor Rams 1. We'll be back right after this time out. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and soon to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back here at Sumter Field, 10-1 Cats. Seven runs, four hits, one air, two left in the second for Napoleon. Overall, for Napoleon, 10 runs, five hits, one error, and Cats have left three. Rams with a single run in the first inning had an opportunity to grab more, and they did not, and it's been downhill ever since. 10, 6, and 1 for Napoleon. 1, 2, and 1 for Tenora. For the Rams, 9, 1, and 2. Mills, Holmeyer, and Spicella to face Owen Espinoza. Mills steps in, bats from the right side of the plate. Espinoza winds, fires, pitch, high and away, ball one. First chance. See Dom Mills. Espinosa's pitch to Mills outside. Ball two. Ever so slight breezes. It's blowing this way, but it's blowing the dust up this way, unfortunately. 2 0 -oh pitch. High and away. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes to number nine hitter Dom Mills. Mills, your DH hitting for the Rams catcher, Parker Hancock. Three zero. -oh. Misses four straight balls for Espinoza. Puts Hancock down at first base to start the Rams' third inning. Top of the lineup. Alex Holmeyer steps in. Holmeyer struck out to start the contest for the Rams. First pitch is a strike to Holmeyer. Thanks for joining us here on Tenora Rams Live. Appreciate everybody from Napoleon and Tenora tuning in. Said, you can check out the HD version of this game. Probably in the morning, it takes forever to upload a video to YouTube in 1080 HD. Well, like a six hour process. This was a strike. One ball and one strike to Alex Homai, a runner at first. Short leave. Short leave. Short lead by Mills. Pitch to Homeyer's foul back. A ball and two strikes to the Rams leadoff hitter. Shortstop, Alex Hillmeyer. But the spring Rams coming off that 19 and seven season lost to the eventual state runner up, Ottawa Hills, in the sectional finals. Inside strike three called. So Hillmeyer goes down looking for the first out this inning, second strikeout against Hohmeyer for Espinoza. That's his fifth. Going to bring up Adam Spichala. 
Michella started at third. Moved to the mound last inning. Him and Morlock switch. Pitch to Adam as a strike. Mill short lead at first leads away. Espinosa's pitch. Tapper to the shortstop. Big hop. Fires over to second base for the force out. Taken in by Leach. The high bounding ball to Bickle. Bickle had to take a step back. Fielded it, which almost killed any chance of a double play. Hey, one more. We go hit some more. Let's go. 6-4 on the put out for the second out. So Spachella is on at first. He replaces Mills. Morlock reached on an error in the first. Pitch to BJ. Inside corner, strike one called. Six. Six. The rover back with the head first dive is Spychella. Espinosa comes set. Pitch to the plate. Morlock taps it foul just outside the bag at third. Parker Woods comes in, scoops it up, fires it back to Espinosa on the mound. Spicella heads back to first base. Count to Morlock is no balls and two strikes. 10 1 Napoleon here in the top of the third. Espinosa fires. Morlock swings away, skies it on the infield. First baseman Jacob Shadle says, get out of my way, I got her. And he puts it away to retire Morlock in the Rams here in the third inning. Fort Sonora, they go quickly. No runs, no hits, no errors. Rams leave one on base after two and a half over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Wildcats 10, Sonora 1. We'll be back right after this time out here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing, rather than going to the gym merely to work out. We train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and soon to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Bottom of the third over here at Sumter Field in Bryan, Ohio. Wildcats with a 10-1 lead. Last inning, Wildcats sent 12 batters to the plate. Scored seven runs on four hits, one error. Key stat in that whole thing was the first two batters were retired in the second inning. And then after that, as we said, the wheels fell off of the Rams car and then the engine also fell out of the Rams. Trey Rubenstein with three steals last inning in the inning. Napoleon had seven stolen bases in the bottom of the second. For Napoleon, two, three, and four, Dietrich Hardy and Gherkin to face Adam Spicella. Spicella on in relief of Morlock. First pitch, low, ball one. Stay up in here. Stay up. Dietrich 333 this summer. Has seven runs batted in. Check swing. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the number two hitter, Devin Dietrich. Dietrich is in left field. Dietrich has three stolen bases himself. Two base on balls, two runs scored, three steals for Devin Dietrich. Pitch is a strike. Two balls and a strike to Dietrich. Base is empty. Bottom of the third inning. Wildcats sword Sora 10 to 1. 2 1 pitch to Dietrich. A little soft liner down the left field line. Falls in for a hit. DeLarber overruns it. And Dietrich in with a single. 
And he goes to second on the air on the Rams' left fielder. Come on, Silver Fox. Luke Hardy steps in. Hardy has walked twice and scored two runs for Napoleon. Dietrich down to second, leads away. Pitch to Hardy. Changeup stays inside. Ball one. Rams have a couple more innings to chip away. If not, it'll be a five inning contest. Dietrich in second, nobody out. 1-0 pitch coming to Hardy. Hardy fouls it off first base side, out of play. There's a beautiful park over here, Brian. Sumter Field. The scenic background. Well maintained. Fantastic high school ballpark. This fantastic ballpark in general. Pitch to Hardy. Driven to center field. Gusweiler puts it away, try to tag up at head to third is Dietrich, and he does so. So Devin Dietrich scampers over to third, first out of the inning. Hardy flies to Gusweiler in center. It's going to bring up number four hitter, Lucas Gherkin. Ger uh, Gherkin, the DH. Single scored and had an RBI in the second inning. He's officially one for two. He's hitting for the second baseman, Ben Leachty. 133 for Gherkin this season. Pitch swung on, hit the opposite field. It's going to fall in for a base hit down the right field line. Up to get its Wolfram, not before. Devin Dietrich crosses the plate with the Wildcats' 11th run. Another RBI single by Lucas Gherkin. So Gherkin's on it first with one out. For man number five hitter, Parker Woods. Woods with the walk and a run scored in the first. Single, RBI, and a run scored in the second for Parker Woods. 316. This one hits right back to Spicella. Caught it. Threw over to first base to Peters to complete the double play, and just like that, the inning's over. But Napoleon adds another run. They do so with two base hits. No Ram errors. And on the double play, no runners left on base. Heading to the top of the fourth inning over here at Sumter Field in Bryan. Napoleon 11 and Sonora 1 on your drop zone. Pete Saria scoreboard will be back right after this. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Top of the fourth inning over here at Sumter Field. Rams uphill climb against Owen Espinosa and the Wildcats. They trail 11 to 1. Fort Sonora, 4, 5, and 6. Gus Weiler, Wolfram, and Peters to face Owen Espinosa. Gus Weiler singled and was caught stealing in the first inning. First pitch by Espinosa just misses outside. I think if the Rams could go back and do over the first inning again, Gus Weiler pitched to Grady's fouled off for the Rams dugout. 
Grady had the stolen base in the first inning. He just, for whatever reason, elected not to slide and was called out. 1-1 one, one pitch to Gus Weiler. Tapper, third base side. Nice play by Parker Woods to get the speedy Gus Weiler. Off-balance throw by Parker Woods. Nip Gus Weiler at first for the first out here in the fourth inning. A fantastic play over there by Parker Woods. So Connor Wolfram will step to the plate. Get the first one. Connor struck out in the first. First pitch is a strike by Espinoza. Hey, out, out. Pitch is fouled off right behind us. Five strikeouts for Espinoza. He's allowed one run on two hits. Espinosa gets a sign from Hardy, winds it up, 0-2 pitch. Yes. Outside, one ball and two strikes to the Rams right fielder, Connor Wolfram. Riley Peters awaits on deck for Tenor as they trail 11-1. Pitch, ground ball, shortstop side. Bickle up with it, throws across in time to get Wolfram. 6-3 on the putout for out number two. Bring up Riley Peters. Peters struck out his only plate appearance thus far in the second inning. He really worked through that one. Yeah, nice job. 11-1 Cats here in the top of inning number four. But a little win we had has died down. Pitch to Peters inside, ball one. Rams two hits were in the first inning. They had a chance to score more runs, just plated one. Peters fouls it behind the plate. Ball and a strike to Riley. Bases empty, two outs here in the top of inning number four. Rams trail by 10. You threw it, only went that far with the bad throw, Amy. I bet it's Oh, no. One one pitch from Espinoza. He winds it up. Pitch to Peters. Pitch. Change up. Uh, nice pitch by Espinoza. 72 on the radar. Shadle at first, Leachy at second, Bickle at short, Woods at third. Hardy behind the plate. Dietrich, Rubenstein, and Ellers, your Wildcat outfield, left to right. Espinoza, one, two, swung on and missed. Strikeout number six for Owen Espinoza. Peters goes down for the second time. Fort Sonora, no runs, no hits, no Wildcat errors, and no Rams left on base. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up. 11-1, Wildcats ahead on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 Five seven six six eight nine four. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Bottom of the fourth. Six, seven, and eight for the Wildcats. Shadow Bickle and Espinosa to face Adam Spicella. About five, maybe six Fridays from now, we'll be at Snorta High School for the scrimmage versus Elmwood. Then the following Friday, Liberty Center will be in to kick off the 2023 football season. Coach Becker and the Rams are ready to go. Grady, Grady out there in center field, and he's ready to tee it up right now. <laughs> he's ready to go, too. Big things. Rams have a very rough first three games this season. Liberty Center... Otsego and then Archibald. 
Pitch to Shadle. Take it out. Take it out. Smashes it on the ground to third base. Morlock up with it. Fires wide of Peters at first. Heads down the right field line. Parker Hancock all the way down the line. Scoops it up. But not before Shadle is down to second base on the air. Morlock fielded it cleanly. Took a little bunny hop in there and fired wide of first baseman Riley Peters. Throw went down the line down by the batting cage. But more impressed by Parker Hancock, who like raced about 60 yards to track that ball down in foul territory in right field. So Shadle's on at second. Kel Bickle steps in. Bickle 256 this summer with eight runs batted in. First pitch swinging. Foul ball third base side. Bickle grounded the short in the first, and then that everlasting second inning for Napoleon where they scored seven runs. Singled, had an RBI and stole a base. Spicella comes set, looks back at the runner a second. 0-1 pitch, swung on! High fly ball to center field. Good arm. Gusweiler, a couple steps back, fires in to Morlock, throw off a bit into third base with the head first dive is Shadle. So Bicker, Bickle, files for the, Bickle flies deep to center field for the out. Shadle tags up and heads to third. So Shadle's at third with one out. Bring up Owen Espinoza. Espinoza struck out his first plate appearance last inning. And then Zach Ellers. Foul that up with a ground ball to third base. So Napoleon, last inning, their first two batters were retired. And then after that, they sent 10 batters to the plate and scored seven runs, and they lead 11 to one. Kind of a nightmare inning for the Rams defense. First pitch is a ball, second one coming to Espinoza's bit outside. Two balls and no strikes to Owen Espinoza. On the mound, Espinoza. Allowed just one run on two hits, and that was all in the first inning. It's by Cello's pitch, outside ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Rams infield, in at the cut of the grass. Pitch to the plate, low and outside, ball four. Espinoza trots down to first base on the walk. Second consecutive walk by Espinoza as he had two plate appearances last inning. So Espinoza had third at bat in less than an inning. Well, I guess an inning plus. Inning and a third. Number nine hitter Zach Ellers steps in. Ellers with an RBI single in the third. Runners at the corners for Napoleon. One out. Spicella throws over to first base. And that's second inning. Trey Rubenstein with a straight steal of home. Pitch is fouled off first base side out of play. No balls in, one strike to Zach Ellers. Top of the lineup awaits on deck Trey Rubenstein. Spicella working out of the stretch, fires over to first base, low. Scooped up by Peters at first base. Runners at the corners for Napoleon. Shadle at third. Espinoza at first. Ellers at the plate. No balls in one strike. Pitch coming. There goes the runner. Hancock fires down. In time to get the runner. Nice throw by Parker Hancock to get Owen Espinoza. Espinoza caught stealing a second for out number two. Nice throw by Parker Hancock. So Shadle at third now with two outs. 0-1 pitch coming to Ellers outside. Ball two, or strike two. No balls and two strikes to Zach Ellers. Spicella gonna work out on the windup. Runner at third, 0-2 pitch. 
Ground ball, second base side. Cooper Farrell up with it. Throws over to Peters at first to retire Ellers and the Cats. In the inning for Napoleon. Finally, Napoleon does not score. No runs for Napoleon. No hits. One error by Tenora, and the Wildcats leave one on base. Heading to the fifth inning, Rams need a run. They trail 11 to one on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back after this here on Tenora Rams Live. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the the Tenor Athletic Boosters say go Rams. Back here at Sumter Field. Last chance for the Rams. They trail 11 to 1. For Tenora, 7, 8, 9. Farrell, DeLarber, and then Hancock to the plate. Hancock will hit for Mills, says Coach Farrell. Rams with a single run in the first inning. Things look good for Tenora in the first inning. They had a run and two runners on with one out. And Point came back with three in the first, seven in the second, one in the third. And he did not score in the fourth. One run, two hits, two errors for Tenora. 11 runs, eight hits, and one error for Napoleon. Cooper Farrell struck out in the fourth inning. Steps to the plate. Espinoza winds it up. First pitch to Cooper. Strike called. Strike two by Espinoza. Oh, yeah. The Larber on deck. Then Parker Hancock, who was the MVP in the championship game of the Junior Acme team last Friday night. Yep, yep, Check swing, strike three called. Yes. What do we got? Farrell down for the second time. This one called strikes, went down swinging in the first or the second. Nothing gets started. Go. Number eight hitter, the left fielder Trent DeLarber, only played appearance. Grounded to short. Takes the first pitch. Let's go, Oak. Let's go, Oak. Larber bats from the left side. Espinoza winds it up. Pitch to DeLarber. Strike called. Spot. DeLarber not to said yes, yes, yes it was. Espinoza's pitch to DeLarber. Fouled off. Good mix. Behind the plate. No balls and two strikes to Trent DeLarber. <laughs> Owen Espinosa winds it up. The righty fires. Swung on and miss. Strike three. DeLarber down swinging back-to-back -back strikeouts. Actually, three straight strikeouts by Espinosa. Peters, Farrell, and DeLarber. Parker Hancock going to step in for his first plate appearance, batting for Dom Mills. Mills walked his only plate appearance. We said Hancock was the MVP of the championship game in the Junior Acme tournament held a week ago at Salina, which the Rams were the state champs in the Junior Acme tournament. Pitch to Parker, fouled off behind the plate. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Base is empty. Two outs. Rams trail 11 to 1 here in the fifth inning. 10 run rule. Should be in effect. Espinosa's 1 1 to Parker Hancock. Hancock. Shallow liner in the right field. Opposite field single by Parker Hancock. Keeps the Rams alive. Top of the lineup, Alex Holmeyer. One. 
Or Connor Welling, actually, yes. Connor Welling is hitting for Holmeyer. Coach Farrell told me that. So Connor Welling steps in for the Rams. Runner at first, two outs. That's just the third hit allowed by Espinosa. Two of those were in the first inning. 69 miles an hour on that pitch. That was a ball to Connor Welling. Espinosa comes set. Pitch to Connor. Throw it out of first base. Just back ahead of the tag was Parker Hancock. Two balls and no strikes to Connor Welling. Having to spy Chala on deck. <laughs> Espinosa's 2-0 to Welling. Outside ball three. Three balls and no strikes to Connor Welling. Espinosa's 3-0 to Welling. Strike one called. Connor, nice basketball season this past winter. Swung on and missed. Throw down to first base. Back safely is Hancock. Three balls and two strikes to Connor Welling. Payoff pitch coming to Welling. Espinosa steps off, fakes the throw to first base. Back is Hancock over there. Rams trail 11 to 1 here in the top of the fifth. Pitch hit right at the second baseman. Snagged by Dom Leachty. Welling lined it. Unfortunately, right at Leachty for the third out. In the inning, Fort Sonora. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Final from Sumter Field. 11 to 1. The point advances to basically state because they will travel to Defiance and the host city will automatically be in the state playoffs. So the Poyan will head to Defiance and join Defiance in the state tournament. Job, baby. Can I get a quick team picture? Yeah. Yeah. Final numbers, 11 runs, eight hits, one error for Napoleon for Tenora, one run, three hits, and two errors. Thanks everybody for joining us, or myself, joining me here the last couple days for some summer baseball. We'll see everybody about five, six weeks. Thanks. We'll have some scrimmage football from Tenora, and then next Friday after that, we'll have some football versus Liberty Center. In between, we have some stuff for NWO Sports with Logan, have a preseason special from Defiance Physical Therapy. So you can check that out. I think that's on Friday the 12th, August 12th, maybe. It's the same afternoon as the evening scrimmage versus Elmwood. Thanks to all of our sponsors, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title, AC Clubhouse, Pizza and Nay, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, and Striker and Ayersville, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oak Lona Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and, Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Mech, and then Postuma Insurance and Investments. So thank you for joining us here on this Friday night. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. And like you said, we'll see you in about five weeks for more Tenora Rams Athletics. And this will be Scrimmage. From Tenor High School versus the Elmwood Royals. Until then, it's Keith Brown. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenor Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenorRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenor Rams Audio.